Hello everyone, this is Jim Lucy, Editor-in-Chief for Electrical Wholesaling and Electrical Marketing with the February 20th, 2023 edition of today's Electrical Economy podcast sponsored by Champion Fiberglass. The company began producing epoxy fiberglass conduit fittings in 1988 and in 1989 developed the first conduit from epoxy resins that had flame resistance and low smoke characteristics. This met the most stringent codes and specifications. In today's podcast, we'll look at the counties in the United States that had the biggest increases in electrical sales potential and the 10 metro areas that account for 40% of all commercial and multifilm construction in 2022. We will also check out some weekly economic indicators that can give you a sense of where the economy and the electrical market may be headed in the coming weeks and months. These five weekly indicators are initial unemployment claims at the state level, rail freight car car traffic, the Baker Hughes rig count, oil prices, and copper prices. I had to record this podcast a few days before the, this week's data came out, and I apologize that for not providing with the most recent data available. We'll be back on track with the re- data releases on the next podcast. Our thanks again to Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring today's Electrical Economy for 2023. For the week ending February the 4th, the advanced figure for seasonally adjusted initial unemployment claims was 196,000. That's an increase of 13,000 from the previous week's unrevised level of 183,000. The four-week moving average was 189,250, and that's a decrease of 2,500 from the previous week's unrevised average of 191 and 750. The U.S. unemployment rate for the month of January is 3.4%. We had three states with a decrease in unemployment claims for the week ending February 4th of at least 1,000. These three states are Georgia, with a decrease of 1,665, New Jersey, with a decrease of 1,440, and Texas, with a decrease of 1,062. Some other states with some notable decreases in their unemployment claims for the week ending February the 4th were Arkansas, down 772, Oregon, down 699, Pennsylvania, down 539, South Carolina, down 335, Colorado, down 252, Mississippi, down 235, Tennessee, down 225, and New York, down 205 claims. We had several states with some fairly large uh, claim increases for, for the weekend in February the 4th. They were California, which was up 7,579, Ohio, which is up 3,419, Illinois, which is up 1,561. Also up by a significant amount were Massachusetts, registering 984 more claims, and Iowa, up 726 more claims. An interesting leading economic indicator for the overall U.S. economy is freight rail traffic. It's a measure of the amount of raw materials and finished goods being shipped by rail. The best source for this data is the American Association of Railroads, or AAR. It publishes this data weekly at www.aar.org. For the week ending February the 4th, total U.S. We- weekly rail traffic was 449,586 car loads and intermodal units, and that's down 1.9% compared with the same week last year. Total combined U.S. rail traffic for the first five weeks of 2023 was 2,293,210 car loads and intermodal units, and that's a decrease of 3% compared to this time in 2022. While the overall data through the week of February the 4th was down, we once again saw there some significant increases in several freight categories, and several of the declines were not as pronounced as they were in the last release of January data. Compared to the year-to-date data from this time last year, motor vehicles and parts were up 15.7%, which is a solid increase from the previous week. We had petroleum and petroleum products up one point to 13.3%, and non-metallic minerals were up 10.2%. On the negative side, chemicals were down 9.8%, shipments of forest products were down 7.7%, and total intermodal unit shipments were down 7.1%. If you track the oil market, you're probably familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count. This tracks the oil and gas rigs that are operating. The data is available by state, by basin, and nationally at www.rigcount.bakerhughes.com. This slide gives you an idea of the largest oil and gas deposits. It really gives you a good sense of just how many of the large oil plays are in Texas and Oklahoma, and how big an area the Marcellus gas region covers in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and parts of West Virginia. While it's not anything dramatic, drilling activity edged down slightly in Texas and in the nation's two largest oil markets through the week ending February the 4th. With 352 operating rigs, the Permian Basin, which is the nation's largest oil deposit, had two fewer rigs operating than in January. It's still up about 17% over last year. 
the Eagle Ford Basin in Texas, which is the nation's number two market, had 71 rigs pumping, but it is down one rig and it is still up 31.5 rigs over last year. Overall, the state of Texas was down seven rigs to 370 total rigs. However, it is still up 23.3% over this time last year. The current price of West Texas Intermediate Crude or WTI crude oil as of February 14th is $78.83 per barrel, according to macrotrends.net. Economists like to call copper pricing Dr. Copper because it's the leading economic indicator. Copper is used in many, many different industries, with the construction industry among, among the leading markets because of its use in wiring cable and copper plumbing pipe. Comex copper prices on February the 14th were $4.07 per pound. They have tailed off about $0.20 cents per pound since late January. Now let's take a look at some new data that Electrical Marketing recently published on the ele electrical potential at the county level for 2022. We'll look at the largest counties with the biggest increases year over year and the counties that are the biggest in total electrical potential. If you need 2022 electrical sales potential for more than 1,000 counties, it's available as part of a $99 annual subscription to Electrical Marketing Newsletter. You can subscribe to EM, or as we call it, at www.electricalmarketing.com. Two counties enjoyed an increase in total estimated sales potential of more than $1 million, Maricopa County in the Phoenix Metro and Harris County, which covers a lot of the Houston Metro. We estimate our sales potential using electrical wholesaling sales per employee multipliers from the 2023 Market Planning Guide with the data on contractor and industrial employment. These two market segments account for an estimated 75% of all electrical sales. If, when you look at this data, that is available from the Census Department, and they, they is, the most recent is through the second quarter of 2022, you will find that there were a number of other markets that also had some pretty interesting increases of over 50 million in sales. Pima County, which covers the Tucson market, was up $82.1 million by our estimates. Orange County, Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Anaheim Metro, so we estimated an increase of $73.3 million. San Diego County, we estimated an increase of $71 million. Dallas County, which is in Dallas, Fort Worth, or Arlington, MSA, or Metropolitan Statistical Area, up $55 million. Travis County, which is in the Austin Round Rock Metro, up 54.9%. Los Angeles County, in obviously Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Anaheim Metro, up $54.4 million. Brazoria County, the Houston, Woodlands, and Sugarland, the Texas metropolitan statistical area was up 54.1% according to our estimates. And Riverside County in Riverside, San Bernardino, and Ontario, California, MSA, up $50 million, $50.8 million. Now let's take a look at the largest electrical markets at the county level. We estimate that 11 counties have an estimated electrical sales potential of at least $1 billion. These 11 markets account for an estimated 13% of all the electrical sales, and I think that's pretty amazing. These counties with a billion dollars in sales are Los Angeles County, Houston's Harris County, Maricopa County in the Phoenix Metro, Orange County in the Los Angeles metropolitan area, Dallas County in the Dallas area, Cook County, which covers a good chunk of the Chicago metropolitan area, San Diego County, King County, which covers most of the Seattle, Tacoma, and Bellevue, Washington metropolitan statistical area, Santa Clara County in the San Jose metropolitan area, Riverside in the Riverside, San Bernardino, and Ontario metropolitan area, and Clark County, which is in the Las Vegas, Henderson, and Paradise, Nevada metropolitan statistical area. The Dodge Construction Network recently published some interesting data on the metropolitan areas that had the most commercial and multifamily construction. Let's take a look at them. Dodge Construction estimates that these metros accounted for 40% of all commercial construction and multifamily housing in 2022. The top 10 markets were the New York metropolitan area, which extends from northern New Jersey through New York and Long Island and into, actually into eastern Pennsylvania, the Dallas, Fort Worth, and Arlington metropolitan statistical area, the Washington metropolitan area, which extends throughout the District of Columbia, Virginia, Maryland, and into West Virginia, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Miami Beach, Atlanta, Sandy Springs, and Marietta metropolitan area, the Houston, Baytown, Sugarland metropolitan statistical area, the Phoenix, Mesa, Scottsdale, Arizona metropolitan area, Austin, Round Rock, and Texas, the Chicago metropolitan area, and the Seattle, Bellevue, Washington area. We thank Dodge Construction Network for providing this data as well as many other good and interesting bits of data throughout the year. 
That wraps up our podcast for today. A special thanks to the folks at Champion Fiber Nuts for sponsoring our podcast series in 2023. We'd also like to congratulate them on some recent news that they that Champion has added a fourth production line to meet the robust demand for its fiberglass condo and bridge drain products. The upgraded facility will increase capacity by 33%, and it plans to be fully operational within just 8 to 10 months. The company doubled its capacity in 2020 with a new manufacturing line, and after one year, that line was already running at capacity. Again, we congratulate them on this impressive achievement. Thanks again to the folks from Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring the Electrical Wholesaling Series of today's Electrical Economy Podcast. Getting a great response from our people at NEMRA and different shows I'm attending, so I feel good about what we're doing there, and I'm glad that we're providing some content that is useful in your businesses. Please contact me if there's any other type of economic data you would like us to cover in these podcasts. Our next presentation will be on March the 6th. Until then, be happy, be healthy. I'll look forward to talking with you in a couple of weeks.